Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And moving on to the next question, we have to find the shortest distance between a line that passes through these two points, negative five, three, and four, six, and the point two, negative five. So another example dealing with the shortest distance from a point to a line, and we've gone through a couple of examples, which when I'm doing this example, I'm assuming you've gone through the other ones, make sure you're going in order on the website. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the website. There's a link in the description box. So in the overview video, I went through general steps. Those are the steps we're gonna be following. And then there's also a formula I've introduced in previous examples. And we're gonna use that formula as well at the end to make sure we're getting the same answer. So. This is a unique format because notice in the previous examples, we are given the equation of the line that we are working with. But in this case, we're given the coordinates that the line is going through. So we're gonna have to do a preliminary step here where we're gonna have to find the equation of the line first. And then once we have the equation of the line, we follow those exact same steps that we've done before with finding the shortest distance from a line to a point. So to show you visually, just quickly, what's happening here. So negative five and three, let's say that's like over here. This is not gonna be to scale, but just a quick diagram to show you what we're doing here. And then we got four and six. So that's gonna be like over here. So we have this line like that. It's going through those two points. And then we have the point two and negative five. So two, negative five, that would be like down here. And so we have to find the shortest distance between this line and this point over here, right? And it's gonna be the perpendicular distance, meaning that this line, this distance line, and then this line, they make a right angle with each other. Okay, so that's roughly what's happening. So. If you don't want to kind of get it too messy with a Cartesian plane, you can actually just draw all this stuff without a Cartesian plane like this. So we could label this, this will be negative five and three, this will be four and six, and then this point here is two and negative five. And then we are finding this distance here. So First step is finding the equation of this line. Once we have the equation, then we could follow those same other steps we've done in previous examples. So to find the equation of that line, what I'm first gonna do is find the slope of the line. So let's label this x1, y1, this will be x2, y2. So the slope would be just in general, y2 minus y1, rise over run, which would be six minus three, over four minus negative five, which would be three over, this ends up being four plus five. So this would be three over nine, which would be one over three. So we got y equals one over three x plus b. Now we gotta solve for this b value. So we could plug in either point. I'm gonna plug in the four and six. So I'll have six equals one over three times four plus b, six equals four over three plus b. Uh, so the b value, if we leave it on this right side, bring the four over three over. So we'll have six minus four over three is equal to b. Uh, this is like six over one, common denominator, three. Multiply this by three, multiply this by three. So we'll have 18 over three minus four over three. Uh, which would give us 14 over three, like that. So 14 over three is the B value. So the equation of this line over here ends up being Y equals one over three X plus 14 over three. And now this question becomes exactly like questions we've done before. We have to find the shortest distance between this line and then this point here. So what we have to do is we gotta find the equation of this line over here. And the way we do that is we already have a point on the line, but we need the slope of it. 
and notice it's perpendicular to this line. So the slope of this line is going to be the negative reciprocal of the slope of that line. So we have the slope of this line, which is 1 over 3. So a perpendicular slope is going to be the reciprocal of that, which would be 3 over 1. And then we change the sign, so we put a negative there. Because this was positive, this ends up being negative. If this was negative, we'd put a positive here. So negative 3 over 1 just gives us negative 3. So now we have the slope of this line, which is negative 3. And then we have a point that it's going through to a negative 5. And then we just find the equation with those parameters. So we'll have y equals negative 3x plus b. Plug in negative 5 for y. Plug in 2 for x. This would end up equaling negative 6. And then we'll have plus b, negative 5. Bring this over. Negative 5 plus 6 equals b. So the b value is 1. Okay, so the equation of this line is y equals uh, negative 3x plus 1, like that. What's the next step? Well, now we got to find the point of intersection between the two lines, which would be this point over here. Okay, so we got y equals 1 over 3x plus 14 over 3. And then we got y equals negative 3x plus 1. So finding the point of intersection, we do substitution or elimination. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, plug it in for this y. So basically make the lines equal. So then we could solve for the, um, the x value. So here, just be careful with your algebra. Let's bring all the numbers to one side. Bring all of the variables to the other side. So I brought this over, brought this over. 1 minus 14 over 3. Let's do this on the side. It's like 1 over 1. Common denominator is 3. So we'll have 3 over 3 minus 14 over 3, which would be uh, negative 11 over 3. So this ends up being negative 11 over 3 on this left side. 1 over 3 plus 3. Again, common denominator is 3. So we'd have 1 over 3 plus 9 over 3, which would give us 10 over 3. All right, so 1 over 3x plus 3x would give us 10 over 3x, like that. And now at this point, what we do to isolate for the x, divide both sides by 10 over 3. So these would cancel out. So basically, what would happen is we'd have x equaling negative 11 over 3 divided by 10 over 3 like that, which would equal negative 11 over 3 times 3 over 10, these cancel out, we end up with negative 11 over 10. So that would be the x value of this point over here. We would have negative 11 uh, over 10. To find the corresponding y value, we could just take this, plug it into here, or plug it in there. It doesn't matter which one, we're still going to get the same y value. I'm going to plug it into this one. Just feel like there's less going on here. All right, so this would be over 1. This would be 33 over 10 plus 1, which would be like 33 over 10 plus 10 over 10, which would give us 43 over 10. So that would be the corresponding y value. Okay, so this point here, the coordinates of it are negative 11 and 10 and then 43 over 10. And just in case your final answer has to be in exact value form, which is what we're going to get to, and not decimals, then you want to make sure you're leaving all this stuff in fraction. And so now what is left to do is we got to find the distance between this point and then that point right there. So to do that, what we're going to do is use the length 
or the distance formula between two points, which is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's label these. This would be x1, y1. This will be x2, y2. So here we got to be careful. There's going to be lots of algebra here. Uh, let's actually, since we're working with negatives and fractions and stuff, I'm going to put this in square brackets and then this bracket will be x2. So we'll have 2 minus x1, which is negative 11 over 10. That's going to be squared. And then we're going to have y2, which is negative 5 minus y1, which is 43 over 10. And then that's going to be squared like that. Okay, so just be careful with the fractions with all the negatives. So working with this first, notice these two negatives will turn into a positive. So we'd end up with 2 plus 11 over 10. So this 2 is over 1. Multiply this by 10. Multiply this by 10. So we'd have 20 over 10 plus 11 over 10, which would give us, what, uh, 31 over 10 like that. So this here would end up equaling 31 over 10. So we'd have 31 over 10. That's going to be squared like that. And then over here, we'll have uh, negative 5 minus 43 over 10, which would give us this negative 5 is like over 1. Multiply this by 10. Multiply this by 10. We'd end up with negative 50 over 10 minus 43 over 10, which would give us negative 93 over 10, like that. So this here ends up equaling negative 93 over 10, and then we're going to be squaring it. Now from here, if you remember, whenever you have a fraction to an exponent, what you can do is you could take that numerator to that exponent, you could take the denominator to that exponent. So 31 to the power 2 would give us 961. That's going to be over 100, 10 to the power 2. And then over here, we could take the negative 93 to the power of 2 and then 10 to the power of 2. So this would end up equaling 8,649. Then we'd have 10 to the power of 2, which would give us 100 like that. So adding these up, we would end up with the square root of 961 over 100 plus 8,649 uh, over 100, like that. And then it's nice here, already have a common denominator. So this would end up equaling 961 plus 8,649 would give you 9,610 that's going to be over 100, like that. Then from here, what you want to do, you can simplify this fraction. Notice that these zeros would cancel out, dividing both the numerator and denominator by 10. So we'd end up with square root of 961 over uh, 10. Now from here, your teacher may allow you to leave it like this. But uh, textbooks, you'll see it simplified a lot of times further. The way you could simplify this further, notice we have the square root of a fraction. Well, if you remember, that's the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And then it's nice to do that here because the square root of 961, it's actually smooth. That ends up equaling to 31. And then it's going to be over root 10. Okay, so that there ends up being the final answer. And then this could be in different formats. It might be rationalized. Uh, we've gone over this in videos before. So your teacher may allow you to leave it like that. Textbooks may leave it like that, but sometimes they may also rationalize the answer, meaning that they will get rid of the square root in the denominator. The way you do that is multiply it by one, right? This over this is just one. So when we multiply by this, we're keeping this the same. We're just changing the format of it. And then when we multiply this out, 31 root 10 over root 10 times root 10 is just 10. And then 31 over 10, you want to always see, do these simplify? In this case, they don't. So this is another way 
that it can be written this and this are the exact same thing, right? If you plug both of them in your calculator, you'd get the exact same decimal. And um, again, solutions, textbooks, they may show the answer in this format. Okay, so that is the answer, 31 over root 10. That ends up being the shortest distance between a line passing through these points and this point over here. Now what I wanna do is actually um, use that formula that we've used in different videos and previous videos, we could check our answer. So just as a quick review, if we have a line in standard form, so we're gonna have to actually convert that to standard form to use the formula. If we have this line, if we have this point, then the uh, shortest distance is always gonna equal the absolute value of AM plus BN plus C all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. Hey, okay, your teacher may may not show you this, but I uh, I want to show you it just in case you want to potentially use it in the future to check your answers in a quicker way. So to be able to use this, what we got to do is we got to take this first and convert it to standard form. Now, with standard form, you don't want to have any fractions. You can actually have fractions. You could bring the y over, then the a value would be one over three. The um, b value would be negative one if you bring the y over, then the c value would be 14 over three. But then when you plug those in here, you're gonna have fractions within a fraction, then with a the square root, things are gonna get super messy. So what I would actually recommend doing is, Remember, standard form means that you get rid of any fractions. So this y is like over one, we can multiply everything by the lowest common denominator. One, three, three, three is the lowest common denominator. So multiply this by three, multiply this by three, multiply that by three. So we'd have three y equals three times one over three is just one. So we'd have one x plus these threes cancel out. We're left with 14. Bring the three y over x minus 3y plus 14. So this line and this line, they're the exact same thing, just different formats. But now that we have this, notice that we can get the, um, let me write it over here. We can get the a value, which is just one in front of the x, the b value, which is negative three, and then the C value, which is 14. And then the M value is the point, the X value of the point we're working with, which is two. And then the N value is negative five. So we got all these parameters here, which we could plug into this formula now. So plugging everything in, we'd have A, which is one times M, which is two plus b, which is negative three, times n, which is negative five, plus 14, all over the square root of a squared, which is one squared, plus b squared, which is negative three squared, like that. So one times two is two, negative three times negative five is positive 15, so we'd have positive 15 plus 14, this ends up equaling 31. One to the power two is one, negative three to the power two is nine, so under that square root ends up being 10. And so we end up with 31 over root 10. Notice how it's the exact same thing that we got when we did it the long way. All right, so just a nice quick way, perhaps not the quickest, but a lot quicker than doing it the long way where you can check your answers. But again, as I mentioned in previous examples, you're gonna be tested on the process of doing it the long way.